Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be sharing tips on what documents you need to prepare for your defense. So I'll be talking about what documents to prepare for your defense. So who am I? I'm David. I was arrested for a criminal offense and I was on bail for three years before the case against me was dropped in a Crown Court in the UK. Check out my other videos for further information. The usual disclaimer, I'm not a legal professional and the thoughts, advice and reflections herein are my own as a lay person. I recommend you get advice from a properly qualified legal professional. Okay, so in this document I'm going to list 26 so far, unless I get some further ideas as I go along. 26 documents for you to prepare for your barrister and solicitor for your legal team. Now I'm going to split up this video into two or three videos because it's, it's going to be quite long. Now there are two things. When you're compiling your documents, there are two things you should keep in mind. One is keep it factual. And secondly, ideally keep it checkable. So do you have a document or an email or some other information that, that proves it? So keep it factual and keep it checkable. And when you keep it factual, keep it objective. So when you're compiling this information, supply other theories as well or address other theories so that your barrister is not surprised in court. Even write all the documentation in the third person, i.e. so rather I think this, I was here, describe it as the defendant was here or the defendant did this. At the end of this video, I'll go into detail on how to format the information for your legal team. So this might be in video two or three, depending on how I cut it up. But I don't want to burden with you at all. I want to crack straight on with the documents themselves. So these are the areas that should be addressed and compiled in different documents. But there should be crossover and cross-referencing between the documents. So document one, a profile of the defendant i.e. you. Now remember your legal team, the barrister and the solicitor, will have no idea who you are. They might even be used to dealing with unfavourable individuals. So you might want to have to set yourself apart, but you have to cover the basics in this document. So cover the basic details. So what do you include? You include your family, your age, your background, your ethnicity, where you live, where you have lived, your education, your criminal record if you have one, your work record, include a CV as an appendix if necessary, what skills you have, education, illnesses, injuries, surgeries, medication, past trauma, because they might have informed your development. You do not have to go into too great detail, but if something informs the person you are and the journey you have been on to get to where you are, then include it. Maybe your religious views, political views, life perspective, mental health, relationships, personal and professional, and so on. Any conflict or any previous problems. So don't assume anything. Again, keep it factual and keep it checkable and don't embellish. Document Two, a description of the alleged offence and how it applies or does not to you. So describe the incident as you understand it, as you have been told it by the police perhaps, then keep it factual and checkable and report in the third person what happened and your interaction, your involvement or not with it. Perhaps refer to other related theories of what happened. Document three, time. So describe the offence and the time frame surrounding the offence. So it might be a, a very specific incident in a shop, in a bar, at home, or it might be ongoing. It might be part of a pattern or it's alleged that it is part of a pattern. And you need to give your own clear time frame. Document four, witnesses. Now the supportive witnesses, the defence witnesses. So it's really who, what, why, where, when. So who they are, what they are, what relationship they are to you, friends, family, work colleagues or unknown. Why you are including them, how they contribute to this document, where they were and their involvement in, t in terms of the time frame. So who, what, why, where, when. So these are the defence witnesses. Document five, same again as, as the previous document, but witnesses for the prosecution. Again, who, what, why, where, when. Who they are, what they are, what's their role, are they professional, what's their relationship with you, why are you including them on this list, or why has the police included them on their list of uh, prosecution witnesses, and again, where and when and their involvement in the incident. Okay, document six, witnesses again. So these are character witnesses. 
Now, the case might come down to he or she says, and you will need some character witnesses in your back po pocket, perhaps employers, who can describe who you are and can confirm that you are, for instance, honest and not a liar, because you are going to be called a liar in court, even by the police and by the prosecution. So you need to have character witnesses who might not be directly involved in the incident itself or the offence, but who can testify to who you are as a person. You want your character witnesses to trump any witnesses the prosecution might produce. OK, document seven, evidence. So this is a list of evidence that's available from you as the defendant regarding the offence. So do you have emails, pictures, social media screenshots, copies of forms, phone records, even phone recordings of or other recordings that might be useful? Some might relate directly to the alleged offence. Others might be circumstantial, but could still be useful. So make a list of everything, but keep adding to it over the weeks and months. That's why you need a dictaphone or a voice recorder of some sort, which I refer to in my other video, 20 tips on what to do after you've been arrested. So again, listing all the evidence and what it is and how it relates to the offence or not, and that could support you. Document eight, evidence again. So this is evidence that you can't provide, but is available from others. So the previous one is evidence that you can provide that's in your possession. This document is about the evidence that might be available from others that you don't have the power to get. So it might be from the city council, your employers, even the police, phone companies, anything like that, that might require a court order or some legal notification in order to get it for use in a, in a trial. So it's the stuff that you cannot do do on your own, either because of money or because of law, but it's something that the solicitors should be moving on. And this would include a background check on the accusers or others involved, because it might require proper legal disclosure of some sort. Document 9. So this is evidence again, but this is evidence that is not available for whatever reason. So you list the evidence that you can't provide or cannot be found, and you explain why it is not available. Now, it might be because the police might be withholding the information, for instance, intelligence, which was the case in my case, as it were, and you might need a formal letter of disclosure. But it might be other evidence that you would think should be available in this kind of case or offence, but for whatever reason, it's not available. So in one, one instance, in my case, I was trying to find some information to support my alibi. Uh, I thought getting information from the gym, you know, because I was in the gym on a daily basis would be helpful. But but because the case had gone on for so long, when I went to the gym, they said, oh, we changed our security systems and we've we've deleted all the old records. So I could say in this document, I could provide the information, but I don't have it because the gym have changed their electronic systems. And again, I did the same with my emails from a past employer. So again, list anything that might occur to a legal team, but you can explain why it's not available. Document 10, alibis, if necessary, if they're provable. So where you were, what you were doing, and anything relating to an alibi. Document 11, similar to document 10. So this is alibis that you can't provide for whatever reason. So again, it's who, what, why, where, when, why you can't provide this information. Because maybe somebody's died or somebody has emigrated. So those are points 1 to 10. Please see part 2 for points 11 to 20 and part 3 for the final few items and also the way it should be formatted and presented to your legal team. Uh, please subscribe and if you're interested in helping me then you can buy the books obviously. You can find them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. So they're titled Mad as Hell Parts 1 and 2 by David N. Anderson. Um, but there's also, I'm setting up a Patreon account, so if you want to support me and help me try and knock out more videos, that'd be a great help. Okay, thank you. Let's go. Let's go.